You booked it, episode 201. What's going on, everyone? Thank you for joining me today on You Booked It, the number one podcast where you learn how to create a successful entertainment career. Have you joined the You Booked It community yet? It is your go-to entertainment career resource. Inside, you'll have direct access to Broadway performers, Emmy nominees, and people just like yourself navigating this industry. Learn from those walking the walk. Build industry relationships, access unlimited masterclasses, and learn how to book the job more consistently. Join free today, tap the link in the show notes, or go to youbookedpodcast.com forward slash invite to get inside. And now, let's meet today's guest. Okay, let's kick this off. I am excited to introduce my guest today, Olivia Nash. Are you ready for this, Olivia? I am so ready. Brilliant. Olivia is a producer, director, screenwriter, actor, and owner of Fox Adrift Production Company based in Austin, Texas. She won Best Supporting Actress for a Stage Play and was a finalist in the Best Actress category for a Film. Olivia's passion for story led to screenwriting, and she has produced and directed two proof-of-concept shorts of her own written works titled Hi and El Dorio. Her mission is to bring to life short stories that relate to the human condition while allowing us to escape into a world of beauty. Olivia, that is a quick intro of who you are and what you've done, but why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself, fill in the gaps, and a little bit more about what you do as a professional in the entertainment industry. Yeah, so I actually have been acting most of my life since I was little. And in all of that, I decided I really wanted to learn the business side of the industry. So I ended Mm. up going to Texas State University and getting a business degree in business management and international business, all in the intention to go into the film industry. And then after school, I decided, okay, I actually love writing. And I had been writing before that too, probably like starting in my teens and then just writing like short stories, stuff like that until I found screenwriting. And I was just fascinated and learned the formatting. And it took me, I don't know, I'd say probably five years, like really hitting it hard with learning it. And then I ended up writing three feature films. And after that, I decided I wanted to direct. So made some my two proof of concepts that you mentioned, hi, and El Delirio. And that actually happened last year. Oh, so cool. It's so cool to see things come to fruition like that. And I can imagine you said, oh, okay, I wrote these things. And you're like, all right, who's (laughs) going to make them? Oh, wait, I'm going to make them. Okay, let's do this. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I started my production company in all intention of making my films. Oh, so good. Well, let's dig into this interview and get to our first section here. And Olivia, look, I am a sucker for a good quote. What is your favorite quote you'd like to share with everyone? All right. So I actually have two quotes. Like, obviously, a writer has quotes. So I'll be quick with them. The first one, if clouds are blocking the sun, there will always be a silver lining that reminds me to keep on trying. And that's actually from the Silver Linings playbook that was adapted into a film. It just... It means so much to me in life where I feel like things become too much that there be a silver lining there. But you got to have that emotional roller coaster as well. So that's just how it reminds me when I'm on those downs. There's always going to be something to lift me back up, especially in the industry that we are for film. And then also my second one, the greatest thing you'll ever do is just to love and be loved in return. And I use that motto with everything that I do. I just believe that love is everything and that you should make your choices and things that you're going for with love. I love both of those quotes. And I really like the the first one with the silver linings and having, like you said, you have to go on that roller coaster ride. And you're so right, because look, if you don't have the roller coaster, it's impossible to perceive any difference in anything, right? I mean, it seems yeah. quite obvious, but you never know if things are great or if they're not great. If you never 
experience the whole gamut of emotion or an experience you have to go through that journey and so you can appreciate when things are good and then the other one from moulin rouge yes 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 my of course favorite. <laughs> yeah such a good movie and i was actually in baz in las vegas and that was the moulin rouge of course was one of the stories that was told in that show and it's such great writing such a everything oh my stories. gosh i'm like geeking out over here like i just love moulin rouge so much i've had that story with me for just years and i it's always my reference <laughs> yeah you, you know what this might this might age me just a just a tidge so i remember when that movie was released and i remember being because i'm originally from montana and i remember going to the movie theaters and that's just you know what you did then when <laughs> I don't know, you could just drive barely. And we went and I was like, this movie is so dumb. I don't like it. And I, I walked out of the movie. No! Yes, yes. And no! I, I must just not have been in the mood to see that movie because after it had come out just out of the theaters and you could watch it wherever and go to the movie theater, oh my gosh, and rent it, I watched it. I was like, oh my God, this movie is amazing. And it became one of my favorite movies. So I... I must have just been in the wrong headspace that day, but I vividly remember, I'm like, what is this movie? This thing is crazy. So uh, shame on me, but uh, <laughs> I, I came around <laughs> and, it, and to this day, it's still one of my favorite movies. I love it. It's fascinating how that movie hits people differently. Like I've met a lot of people that it's either they hate it or they love it. And there's not much of an in-between for it. And a lot of the time, like it's a lot of the style. And I think that's what's beautiful about it is Baz just mm. went for it and made what he really wanted to bring out. And it's just it's beautiful. I think it's a beautiful film, especially yeah, the, I mean, the themes. Yes, I love everything that Baz Luhrmann does. And after I figured out that movie was good <laughs> finally you know then then i went down and i watched romeo and juliet which is mm -hmm. brilliant as well and uh, everything that he does is so cool even australia did you watch australia oh no that's one of them that i still need to see yeah, yeah uh, it's, but I it's an epic movie it's like the modern gone with the wind so it's very definitely a bit of a departure in ways from like a moulin rouge or a great gatsby but still wonderful film yeah, he, his work always. I'm just like swoon over here. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Hey, I love the tangent. That was so good. Let's get back on track and dig into this section here. And Olivia, of course, you are an entertainer. I'm an entertainer. And I think that you'd agree that this industry can be one of the most subjective, brutally honest, personally emotional industries in existence. And you know, as well as I, that in order to create and have a successful career in this industry, like you're having now, takes a lot of dedication and hard work. And while, yes, there is an outrageous amount of fun and excitement doing what we do, creating what we create, there are also our fair share of obstacles, challenges, and failures that come with that. And we're going to experience and we're going to have to move forward through. So tell us, what is one key challenge, obstacle, or failure you've experienced in your career that you'd like to share with us? And how did you come out the other side better because of it? Yeah, absolutely. One point saying that this is a very emotional career is so true. It's fascinating how people that are drawn to this career are very emotional people in general. So how we deal with this is fascinating with each person. I think my biggest challenge I was facing is especially me saying I'm not ready. That I was holding myself back. And I think that mm. was the biggest challenge with most of this industry. It wasn't other people. It was me. And I would say just dropping that mindset and really just going for what you're looking for. And again, doing things in love, like going into this with your creativity and also understanding the business, like that's where it's at. But that would be my biggest challenge is just holding yourself back, really. Yeah, that is such a profound realization to make. And I think it also goes hand in hand with taking responsibility for everything in your life, from everything, just everything, not just career and professionally speaking. Because it's easy to externalize why we're holding our, you know, if why we're not doing the thing. It's easy mm -hmm. to 
look at our situation or our circumstances and say and justify why we're not taking the steps forward to do the thing that we're trying to move towards. And it's very easy to do that because it's scapegoating is always easy because you don't have to deal with the hard part and the hard questions. So looking at those things and realizing and going, wait, it's me. I'm the person that's holding myself back is a huge thing because then that allows you to really embrace the idea of taking ownership of everything and taking responsibility for everything. And that also means you take the bad stuff as well. But the good stuff also comes out of that. But you can't just have all good experiences. And you have to know that, look, no one is ever ready. You just have to keep going. And the only way you get good is by doing the thing and failing. Wow, that's so good. I love that. Absolutely. And I think just quick, like my first biggest advice that really hit me when you're making a decision, especially when you're nervous about something or whatever that it is, even with career choices or in your personal life, the decision that you made at the time that you made it was right at that moment. Even Mm. if it ended up being a mistake, it really wasn't because at that moment when you thought it, it was right for you. And I think a lot of people need to hear that. Don't hold any sort of regret because you needed to during that part of your journey to make that decision so that you could grow as a person. Yes, very well said. In hindsight, is always twenty twenty. You could always see the decisions you should have made, but right, you did what you did, and the circumstances play out the way they're going to play out. It's so good. Yeah. Did you know building industry relationships are the most important assets you need to create a long-lasting entertainment career? And don't take my word for it, guest after guest here on the podcast have attributed some of their biggest career moments to their relationships. That is why you need to get yourself inside the You Booked It community you'll learn what you need to do to get noticed and make sure your headshot stays in the callback pile so you can book the gig more consistently and create a successful career. Tap the link in the show notes or go to youbookedpodcast.com forward slash invite to get inside free today. Brilliant. And let's move on to a time that I like to call your spotlight moment that (laughs) one moment in time you realized yes i am going to be an entertainer for a living or maybe it was yes this is what i need to be doing in the entertainment industry tell us about that i'd say my spotlight moment was really when i decided to direct that was actually Mm. during the pandemic i was like everybody isolated and you were sitting there thinking like what is it that you want to do or who you are. And I love, I absolutely love all parts of this industry, but I never thought of myself as a director at first, just because Mm. I don't, and I don't really know why. I think that's the crazy part of it. There was nothing telling me that I couldn't, and there wasn't anything in my head that was like, you wouldn't love this because I absolutely like all parts of my personality should be driving towards directing. But I, it hit me then. And I was like, I really want to make sure that these stories that I wrote are coming to life in the way that I envision them. And then again, it's not that anyone else couldn't make these stories just as beautiful, but I think it was just like, this is how I want to see them come to life. Yeah. So when that hit me, I just wanted to make sure that these beautiful stories were out there. My starting that production company was one of the biggest things. I think I started that at the beginning of this year and it's still growing. And I'm really proud of that to say that I started something and I'm keep going. And I think that's most of what I want to get out there with young creators is that you can do it and you can Mm. start something and feel that and keep going. And so I made those two proof of concepts last year, actually. And then this year I'm making my directorial debut with my feature later this year in August. And that's titled Hi. Yep. Yeah. I love that. That you just, like you said, you you got out of your own way from the previous question. And you said, I'm going to do this. And it's amazing. And it's also one of those things that you have to be in it kind of for the long term as well. You can't just think, oh, I'm just going to start this company and it's going to be brilliant. And you got to just do the work. Yes, always do the work. I think that's part of... 
I think a lot of people are waiting for something to happen. And a lot of mm. the time, you shouldn't wait, just do it. If it's what you want and what you're going for and your dream, just go for it. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Well, let's piggyback on that question real quick and talk about your number one booked it moment. Walk us through that day, what was going on in your life, and what about that moment makes it your favorite booked it moment? So my booked it moment recently actually happened in the last couple of months. I booked a feature film called Meteor, oh. and I'm going to be acting in it as one of the leads and so I ended up getting an email while while I was sitting in the car <laughs> and I ended up just like screaming because I was so excited that this happened as like we've been you know kind of having that disconnect during the pandemic so finally when I'm like I get to be on set again like I was so excited <laughs> but I'd say that's my top booked it moment right there just that excitement and relief of course and it gets exaggerated even because we've gotten we've been in this pandemic time where in-person work really isn't happening it's just starting to creep back so it's that layered with just of course booking something that you're going to be excited and passionate about that's fantastic yeah and mostly with that moment i just felt don't ever limit yourself keep auditioning mm. keep going just pursuing everything like even during something that's so awful that's going on in the world right now and that we're all trying to band together and work through you can still work on your dreams just one step at a time and it's to, it showed me this year like every step that i took keeps helping me move forward and grow yes you can still work on your dreams one step at a time so well said <laughs> and let's take a moment to talk about the present what projects are you working on now? I know you've talked about it a little bit, but let's dig into it a bit more. And we're amidst this global pandemic still. How do you see the entertainment industry moving forward in the next couple of years? So let me start with the entertainment industry and then I'll go into what I'm working on. The entertainment industry, it's fascinating even through this. I, we've had a lot of struggles of everything shutting down for production and things like that. But just the resilience that I saw with all filmmakers just wanting to keep creating. And then so many screenplays have come out of this pandemic with people that mm. it, it's so it's so fascinating that art takes over during a time of just your struggle and something that you or others need to work through. It, it's just beautiful to see the art grow, even though we can't fully make it yet. But I have seen a lot of people still push through the industry and make their films in a safe way with all precautions and things like that. But adjusting stories to fit our current circumstances and still work and hit audiences, which I think is fascinating. So currently, I am working on High, which is titled H.I. Dot high so it has a period at the end it's one of my features that i wrote and we're coming into pre-production for it and i'll just say a little bit about what it's about so on the banks of a coastal village a pair of young adult writers two teen lovers and mentally ill parents intertwine in tales of love and forgiveness during separate stages of life we're really focusing on themes of forgiveness, love. It's a coming of age film. There's a female protagonist and we're bringing to light mental health awareness. This is one of the biggest things in this film to me is there's a lot of anxiety and depression and kind of showing how you can work through those certain things and still have um, still live a really good life, even though dealing with certain struggles. And it is a coming of age film. So it's these younger teens and 20 something year olds that are dealing with home issues, which I feel like we don't really, not that we don't, but we don't really see it often in film. We usually deal with the struggles that they're going through at school. And so I really wanted to focus in on that family dynamic. And we're looking at uh, these these different stages of life with love. So say 50 year olds, 20 year olds and teens and the different parts of love that they're going through during that time of their life. And 
during that, even looking back and finding forgiveness within themselves, really, not really forgiveness of other people, but choices that they made and how they treated people and then looking within themselves and finding that forgiveness to help grow later on. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Please keep me in the loop on when that is going to drop. Definitely will. (laughs) Oh, so good. And it is time to move on to one of my favorite sections in the interview. I call it the Grease Lightning Round. I am going to ask you a handful of questions. I want you to answer them as quickly and concisely as possible. One after another. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. All right. First question. What was the one thing holding you back from committing to a career as an entertainer? Myself. Always. Second question. What is the best piece of advice you have ever received? You create your reality. Third question. What is something that is working for you right now? Or if you'd like to go pre-COVID, what was working for you before our industry went on pause? Really surrounding yourself with creatives, people that help you grow and also see your vision or some story that you're working on, just having those people to support you. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up. So often, in so many ways, in so many forms, this realization, this epiphany comes through in the interviews, and it is all about relationships. Relationships are what create this industry create your career really and so glad you brought that up because we need this we can't live in a vacuum and we can't create in a vacuum we can do things on our own for a little while but eventually you have to find others to work with and collaborate with absolutely and your ideas though they may be great a little bit but having people there to counter those ideas is actually Mm. the best to create work Like people that, sure, they share your same vision, but they might see something that you don't even see and they make it a hundred times better. And honestly, like a whole film, like that isn't just one person's vision. That's everybody there's vision. It's everybody on set, like any little piece, even an extra, they, everything is important. And every single person, a part of that film is important. They create this beautiful world. Well said. And I think it also, you can even expand into the things that oftentimes we don't even realize that maybe are collaborative. Let's take TikTok videos, or if you're releasing YouTube videos, and that's how you create or express yourself with whatever your art and your creativity is. Even if you are writing the script yourself, filming yourself, doing everything, but then you're publishing it on whatever platform, it's still a collaborative process because you've now put it into the world and people are going to interact with it. Absolutely. The story may, if you've written a story, you might at that time be like, you're writing this for yourself, which in that moment is actually good because you're making it real. But that story is for other people. It's for the people that can relate to it. And that's specifically why I wrote High. It was for that one person that absolutely needs it in that time of their life. And that was how I felt with movies myself is I hold on to these certain movies that got me through a lot of hard times. And I want that film to be for these people out there that just need it. Yes. So well said. And the fourth question What is your best resource, whether that is a book, a movie, maybe a YouTube video or podcast, piece of technology that you found is helping your career right now? So actually, podcasts have helped me so much in my career and growing. There's so much information by listening to other creatives that it helps you figure out where you're supposed to be going because each person's path is so different in Mm. this industry that when you listen, you're like, yeah, there's no one way, but everyone finds a way. And that's like the greatest piece of uplifting feeling when you listen to these podcasts i'll shout out one of my favorites which is the the filmmakers podcast they just have all different kinds of from directors producers actors just all kinds of filmmakers that come on and tell their story like this podcast which i love what you're doing here but they do that and they tell how they got where they were, how they raised the funding for their film, how they 
got it to post-production, how they got it out there with distribution, like every piece of the in industry is in podcasts. And I, I love it. Oh, so cool. Yeah. Podcasts are great because it gets so niche and I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the fifth question, if you had to start your career from scratch, but you still had all the knowledge and experience you've collected from your career in this industry, what would you do or not do? Would you do anything differently or would you keep it the same? So that's always a hard question for me when it's like, would you change anything? For sure, and, it is the paradox. <laughs> and the thing is, even when I look back, like, sure, you go through these certain things. I wouldn't really change any part of my journey because I wouldn't be where I am right now. There would be something that would twist it into the way that like I might not meet all these amazing people and especially that the team that I have acquired just in the recent last couple of years I love those people and I love them as my family and I just feel like if I had changed any part of that I wouldn't have met them and the last question what is the golden nugget knowledge drop you've learned from your successful career in this industry you'd like to leave with our listeners create your own work just do it. Just go for it. If that's something that you want to do and you feel like that's your calling, just go for it. And like everyone create their work. I've had a lot of people, they're like, I want to do my thing and I want to do it. And I'm like, that's great. We can all do that. There's no one thing that you have to like, oh, this is my one project. That's all I'm doing. No, like everyone can do it and just be confident in your creativity. If you love it, that's all that really matters. I was told when I was younger, I couldn't do a certain thing. Like I couldn't be an actress based on the way that I look, but I've done it and I kept going because I was resilient. And I think that's, that's what everyone needs to hear is you should just do it and keep going. Yes, I think that is incredible advice to create and just create. Just that's it. Do what you want to do. Make your own projects. Everything happens from that. The relationships you make, the way you grow as a creative, it's so good. Absolutely. And just telling stories that really need to get out there, something that you need to say in the world that someone else can relate to. Yes. And to wrap up this interview, Olivia, it is time to give yourself a plug. Where can we find you? How do our listeners connect with you? Is there anything you want to promote? Absolutely. So <laughs> my Instagram is Olivia underscore meow with two E's. So that's how you can find me, get in contact with me. But really, I'd love if everyone could go check out High's social handles. So Instagram at High h i dot the movie we also have a website hi the movie.com and then we're also still in financing so if you're wanting to be an investor in this film you believe in this story i would love to bring you on board and have you a part of this beautiful story with me ah so good and for everyone listening out there I've put the links to everything Olivia just said into the description of this episode so you can easily connect with her and her projects. And also, be sure to share this podcast with your fellow entertainers, coaches, teachers, arts and entertainment educators, and anyone you know aspiring to create a career in the entertainment industry. You Booked It is the number one resource of expertise on how to actually create a successful entertainment career. It's integral to helping them succeed and helping you create a better, more fulfilling career in this wild and crazy industry. If you like this episode, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. Olivia, it's been such a pleasure to get to know you, to chat. So glad we got connected. I'm so grateful for you having me on the show. It was so nice to meet you, Dane. Likewise. Thank you so much for listening today. If you enjoyed this episode and want more like it, be sure to smash that subscribe button. Also, be sure to join the You Booked It community. Inside, you can connect with your people, build industry relationships, unlock unlimited masterclasses, and access the tools and training you need to create a sustainable career momentum. Get your invite link right now 
tap the link in the show notes or head over to youbookedpodcast.com forward slash invite and we'll see you there.